Hello, Emmanuel. Uh, good morning or afternoon or whenever you're watching this. Um, I haven't seen a lot of you in a while and I have been just uh, praying about what I could do to serve um, the church and it's physically been difficult to be around everyone. But uh, as I've been praying, um, I just feel that the Lord has put on my heart to encourage everyone in uh, family devotions, family worship, and just inspiring your children to faith while at home. I know that right now we're without Sunday school and um, maybe some of you are wondering what can I do to uh, help my children know Christ more, um, to know more about scripture, and just to inspire them in faith. So that's what I wanted to do this video about. And I think I will work my way up from the youngest children to uh, older children to teens. Even though we're not quite there, I still hope what I have to share could um, be helpful. So if you have super small children at home, um, one book I love, which I don't have with me right now because it broke because we've read it so much, it's called um, Homes and Prayers for the Very Young by Martha Alexander. And then I also have this called Prayers for Children. And even my one and a half year old will sit and listen to this. And they're just little prayers. Um, here's an example or poems. Uh, it's called The Gift. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. Here's a little picture. Uh, my three-year-old will memorize these poems. He'll just want to listen to poems over and over again. And then uh, he'll know them. And it even I'm pretty sure the Lord's Prayer is in here. So little things that could just... There's the Lord's Prayer, the doxology, that could stay in young children's minds and hearts forever. Now, along with that, this might seem a little unconventional. I recommend, um, just for maybe a nightly read aloud, uh, there's a book called, well, you all know Cinderella, but there's a version um, specifically by Marcia Brown that I love because at the end of the book, uh, Cinderella forgives her stepsisters and then gives her them a place in her palace. And I just love that because I find it always gives me an opportunity to talk about how Christ not only has forgiven us for all the wicked things that we've done and um, that he's seen, but he's also given us a place in his kingdom. He's preparing a place for us. And this is another beautiful book called um, Mifaro's Beautiful Daughters. Once again, this is not a Christian book, but um, the whole premise of this book is really the same. When Jesus says, um, when I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Um, the least, or what you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me. And that's one thing I love about literature. It just can get into your children's imaginations. And uh, so many truths, even if people don't realize that they're sharing spiritual truths, um, truth is truth. And it just gives us more opportunities to um, point our children back to Christ or to get stories into their imagination that will stay with them and make them think as they go about their day. Now, as your children get a little older, I would say four or five, I love this book. This is the Golden Children's Bible. Um, lots of pictures. The reason I enjoy this more than uh, most children's Bibles is because it is still in Bible language. Uh, meaning I don't find it to be written down to a child or... Um, comic booky. I find it to be still beautiful language. And um, I always find even my young children will listen to a book like that. You may be wondering, how would I go about approaching a Bible like this? Well, something that I like to read educational philosophy, and it used to be that in schools, that um, the Bible was taught 
So I'll read about how school lessons were conducted for young children for the Bible. And um, often, uh, from what I've seen, a good example is to alternate the Old and New Testament. So maybe if you were going to start with a book like this, you could start in Genesis. And just the first day, you could read through the creation. Um, I find sometimes children don't enjoy getting tons of questions, but they enjoy telling you what they've learned. So I think the simplest thing to do for a young child after reading something like the creation story is just to say to them, what did I read to you today? And uh, if they don't have much to say, maybe you could just say, oh, didn't you find this interesting? Or this is what I liked. And then maybe the next day, you go to the first um, story in the Gospels and you just alternate back and forth between the Old and New Testament. I really do enjoy this because this is more of the narrative portion of uh, scripture, which I find uh, kids do better with that than with uh, things like epistles or prophets. I think it's a little too much for young children. I think just getting into their mind the stories of scripture and what God's done and who Christ is um, is something they really enjoy and can grasp. Um, so to go along with that, uh, with my kids, I actually just read out of a regular Bible and only 10 to 20 verses at a time. I'm not selling these. I'm doing a video. Uh, only 10 to 20 verses at a time just to enough for them to listen to. And uh, I found these commentaries, they were recommended, and they're for children, and they're from yesterday's classics. Now, they have um, four for the Old Testament, four for the New Testament, and honestly, just this year, we're just going through these two. It will take all year, and they're written for children, like I said. Um, I don't always read word for word. The man who wrote them was um, an Anglican, so I don't even agree with everything that they have to say, but as the parent, I'm the one holding this, so... I can um, edit some things, but I'd like to just give a little example of what it would be like. So this is when Jesus teaches about forgiveness. Micah, hold on, honey. It says, on the road, the Lord overheard a dispute going on behind him. They thought he had not heard. He knows all our thoughts and words. They were utterly confused and ashamed. When as they sat in the house, he quietly turned to ask him, what, or ask them what? It felt like schoolboys caught in some wrong that they thought was not known. Already they had learned enough to be ashamed of the dispute. What was it about? Why this dispute now? Perhaps because Peter, James, and John chosen to be were chosen to be at the transfiguration. Perhaps the high praise given to Peter at Caesarea Philippi. Um, so these books, it would be like after you read the Bible, it would just, once again, um, it helps the child relate to how that story um, can relate to them and their situations in life. So I think all the resources... The resources with the Bible, those commentaries would really be good up until probably seventh grade. So a few other things. Um, we enjoy doing hymns as a family. Uh, maybe if you could get a hymnal, we'll pick like a hymn of the month. We just take time to uh, learn the hymns. I like. I used to like to really read A.W. Tozer. And I remember in his books, he used to talk about how... You could learn more theology from a hymnal than sometimes from theology books. Uh, so especially this, it has so many traditional hymns. Um, it is well in my soul, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Um, it has some things to think about as you sing the hymn. So like I said, we'll pick, pick sometimes a hymn of the month, sing it a couple days a week, and really get to know that hymn. Um, there's a, I, this one's kind of costly. Um, there is a hymnal for sale. 
that has like devotions to go with it. It's called Then Sings My Soul. So you might want to check that out. So, so far, uh, what I, uh, if I could recap, maybe just starting to read um, the Old Testament and the New Testament stories alternating day to day, having your kids just tell back what they've heard. We also have a simple Bible atlas, just if you want to show them where a place was on a map. I think another great thing to do as a family is uh, memorize scripture. And we enjoy memorizing scripture in context. So um, right now we're going to start memorizing as a family John 1, 1 to 10. In the past, we've done whole Psalms. Um, and this could take like a couple months. It's not a rush. I just think having the context of scripture always with you. Like one year when my son was six, we memorized the parable of the sowers. And sometimes we'll just recite it and uh, review it. But those are things that are always going to stay in your child's heart, in your heart, uh, as you're going about your day, maybe when you're struggling with something. They're things that you can recite to yourself. So, and um, apart from scripture, I think reading great lives of uh, those of the faith is always an encouragement. People that have gone through difficult times, um, been willing to die and suffer for their faith. Uh, is a great encouragement and just helps us put things in perspective. I read through one day a week this book called Trial and Triumph. It does reference a lot of martyrs. So if you have a sensitive child, this you might want to wait. I mean, I think in general, kids nine and up could handle this book. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, we've also read like some saint stories, even though we aren't Catholic, they're just still inspiring stories of people that have done bold things for their faith, and some of them are mystical, but they still just give um, an opportunity to your child to get in to their imagination. Maybe when they're in a difficult situation, they can remember these people that were in difficult situations and made hard choices to defend their faith, to do what Jesus would do even when they would face consequences for it. I would like to now approach the teen years. If you have teens, uh, maybe, um, I think then you can start getting into the epistles. This is something I have been reading. It's called The Early Christian Letters for Everyone. And I think this would great, be great to read with your teens. This goes through uh, James, Peter, First, second John, third John, Judah. And it only has about 10 or so verses. And then a commentary on it. Um, it's not like super, super theological, uh, but it really is very practical. I think this would give you a great opportunity to read a few verses of scripture with your teen and then read the commentary. And that way, too, it's not like you, the parent, like say, moralizing to your teen, saying, oh, you should do this, blah, blah, blah. It's somebody else's, <coughs> excuse me, commentary. And it will give you something to discuss as a family. And I know with teens, sometimes they're starting to want to turn you off. But um, maybe I think if you show them that you are under scripture, too, that as you're reading this together, you are all under scripture together. Maybe you're the first one to confess your shortcomings, confess your sins, even if your teens don't want to open up. They'll see, wow, mom and dad are people under authority too. And um, they're sinners just like us. And I think that will make them more vulnerable and more apt to open up. And another thing is Maybe one night a week, picking some of these great Christian classics, just reading a chapter together, like the imitation of Christ, knowing God, the attributes of God, confessions by St. Augustine. I really think all four of those are great Christian classics that would give you plenty to discuss uh, with your teens and you're just approaching a book together. So I really think as far as spirituality, um, knowing Christ, knowing your Bible, those are the top recommendations. 
Another thing, though, I wanted to say I think is really helpful right now is just inspiring beauty. There is so much difficulty in the world right now and uh, just a lot of ugliness. I know we've all seen a lot of fighting and hatred and just to constantly be reminded of the beauty that God created to show the glimpses of his glory that are in this world, even when things seem dark, even if you are stuck at home, I know for us that has taken the form in nature study. When we moved here, the first thing I did by our back window is I put a bird feeder. Um, we just will look at the birds. We identify the word, birds. We nature journal the birds. I have this series, it's called the Handbooks of Nature Study. And really it teaches you how to study anything you find in nature. But I just think it's so fun to remember what God has created, to stand in awe of it, the beauty of it, to take time drawing it. I'm not a good drawer, but I'll still sit and draw with my kids. Um, we have this book, like, How to Draw Animals. I also recently got this because my kids, I was like, okay, let's find out about trees, and they thought trees were boring in winter. But this book is about how to identify trees by their buds, so we started to nature journal buds. Just gets us outside of our four walls. Um, uh, another thing to inspire beauty is maybe reading about famous composers, listening to famous composers. Um, we've been reading about Mozart, the Wonder Boy. That's what this book is called. And uh, it's not a Christian book, but he was amazing. He was composing things by five or six. It just gives me an opportunity to tell my kids, wow, God gave that person that gift. Isn't that amazing? Like, this is what God wanted him to do. And we could enjoy his music and stand in awe of it. It does sound almost heavenly. Reminding our children that God gives us gifts, that our God is a creator. Our God is a creative God. I think that's so important. So we look at beautiful artwork. There's a lot of beautiful religious art. Um, our God is a creator. And I think right now it could be so easy to be consumers, to consume things to consume media uh, instead of creating. And um, animals can do things by their instincts, but humans, we're really the only ones that were created in God's image with the ability to create new things and to use our imagination. So I think to wrap that up, um, if you could find time to possibly it really only takes 15 to 20 minutes in the morning just to read a few verses, discuss it, maybe pick a day to memorize a passage, sing a song. Uh, this is something that will bring your family together. For us, it works right now to do it over breakfast because uh, my little ones can be loud. So if their mouth is full of food, they're quiet. And then maybe for you, it would be right before bed, especially if you have teenagers that want to sleep in. Maybe you could take 20 minutes in their rooms at night. And uh, lastly, some chapter books. We, I love reading to my kids at night. I just find it to be a, binding experience, a bonding experience. We all enjoy it. Currently, we're reading Treasures of the Snow, which is actually, it was written by a missionary. So this is a Christian book, but it's a story of forgiveness that takes place in Switzerland. Another book we've enjoyed in the past I wanted to share is A Little Princess, which I love because it's, again, it's about a girl that went from riches to rags, but she would not let it affect who she was as a person. And uh, of course, The Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, my husband reads these books. And I have to confess that this has not really been my thing, but I know he knows all about them and he's read them to my kids. My kids have read them. I don't know why I haven't, but... Um, I know that there's a lot of biblical imagery in those books as well. So I really hope this video was helpful. It may have been a lot, I'm sorry. I didn't know if I should break it up into two. Uh, I just, while we're at home with our children and there isn't Sunday school, there is still so much we can do to inspire our children to um, love Christ, to think upon him, to fill their imaginations with things that are worthy. And um, lastly, just to remember that, um, that our children are our disciples. And as parents, 
um, what we do in the home, the atmosphere we create, and who we are is going to do so much more than anything that Sunday school could do. So I just want to encourage all of you to continue to abide in Christ, to abide in the word, to um, abide in prayer, to confess when you're wrong, um, and just continue to carry that uh, atmosphere throughout your home and just to ask God to show you what it means that your children are your disciples and how you could be discipling them each and every day uh, in their struggles and their schoolwork and the things that they're going through. Okay, well, thank you. I hope you enjoy your day. Bye.